Yeah. I don't know, I'm just gonna try something. But I don't want to step in there, guys. If I can pop you out. Well, we took a leap of faith here. Uh, we saw that the Skeletonics team had pulled it off, and so we weren't going to wait for Jim to finish that uh, prototype before getting the art, the artist started on the art of it. His shells, his leg structure, his head. Jim's working on the skeleton, and now Rob and team are working on the skin. Now we've got something that's a little bit unique for a forearm character. How do you how do you balance all that out? Because there, there was a point where we had Bruce in the suit where, you know, y your eye was drawn to the small arms and you were drawn to Bruce and you're constantly trying to figure out. It's like, okay, I see it. I see the guy. It's like, and that's exactly what we didn't want. My first contribution was the arms to cover up Bruce's arms in the suit. We had to disguise disguise his arms to look like a robot. Obviously, Rob and I actually came up together. I built him, but the uh, the three clawed arm on his right hand and on the left side we came up with this drill bit idea just to kind of it's a little wacky a little weird but it's just kind of fun at the same time it looks metal looks heavy looks cool uh, for those forearms we had some designs and the right arm I think stuck pretty close to the design left arm changed quite a bit originally I think it was a robotic hand but it ended up just turning into a gun pants out of nothing more than molded plastic starts to cobble together these guns that not only look dangerous, but look like they each weigh about 500 pounds. His right arm, he has a Gatling gun, and on his left arm, some futuristic type of laser double shotgun uh, thing going on. And the left arm also has the microphone, which he's uh, interviewing the celebrities down at Comic-Con. The guys have done a great job in assembling all of this, you know, and they know that there are these particulars that have to be addressed yet. But you know, when you when you see it as a whole, you just kind of like know there's certain areas that have to be dealt with. Um, one of the biggest areas was weight. It, it's things just kind of got too top heavy. Um, so we've had discussions, and we've decided just to go in and just try to trim a percentage off of all parts on the upper part, just to give Bruce some more mobility. We decided to use a lot of vacuform shells on the upper body. The time frame of the job was another challenge. We didn't have tons and tons of time. So vacuforms enable you to generate shells quickly. They're lightweight, they're pretty durable. Jeff Deist and Damian Fisher quickly got to creating some stone uh, bucks that we could run vacuforms off of. And the pieces started to come together. We didn't have a lot of time to remold pieces for the vacuum bug, so we took the positives that we already had, you know, played them up and corrected it in stone as we went it, with UltraCal. Although all the positives were UltraCal, what we corrected it with was UltraCal as well. Ted came in and he had some foam structure that went into the vacuum forms that definitely dampens because the vacuum form is so thin, it's just I mean, like paper, but it's plastic. So, and you know, putting some ribbing that uh, Ted did was really, you know, helped a lot from that too. Just really had to focus on trying to keep the weight as low as possible, but also needed to not be bouncy, you know, it can't, we didn't want a lot of bounciness. It still had to look like a really robust robot. So. The model shop constructed the, the leg. The legs, for example, are pretty much the biggest things that we molded on the project. Um, we molded one leg and one leg acted as both legs. And the lower legs, we chose to use a different material, which could, you know, take on all the punishment that the lower legs are due to take by kicking chairs or tables or bumping into things. We knew that we needed to design a head. Ultimately, people will need something to lock onto. They need to recognize it. it, it you know, you can't make it so alien or so amorphous that, that they can't connect with it. Darnell was prepping things and then he had a few days to prepare the face, the face mask. And when we saw it on the computer screen, it was like, looks great, let's go for it. And so we printed the face. No molding in between. And that's pretty important for me because if that face somehow falls off and breaks the day of, of first day of Comic-Con, I have 35 hour turnaround. You'll see a lot of grills, thin lines, thin areas, thin walls. And my main concern was to make sure those areas of detail were not too thin that my technology could not reproduce in an ABS-like material. So then uh, Legacy's painters jumped in and started making magic. Uh, Jamie Grove, John Cherevka, Derek Rosengrant. The vibe of the paint scheme was, uh, it was kind of earthy toned, military kind of uh, 
scheme going on. Battle damage, beat up. Well, the shoes would be dusty. There would be scrapes where the arms are moving together. And if he's got in a fight, you put dents and scratches and dirt. Wow, he's got mud on his feet. It's like, where's he been? You know, what's he been doing? It's got rust, it's got drippy stains. It's like, you know, it, it has a backstory that you don't even have to worry about telling. It starts to tell itself and people start to fill in the blanks. It involves many techniques of weathering and paint chipping and you know, the green, the army, the camo, and the uh, shades going on. Stan always had us looking in books of tractors or tanks or whatever to see how things wear and high points on, on corners and things would be the things that take the abuse. So we're applying all that stuff to our paint techniques and um, just kind of the general aesthetic of this character. So. Yeah, it fools everybody every time. It's, we've done stuff that's styrene and foam and it looks like the heavy drill press part or something. You know? Then after that, I kind of made my move into doing a lot of the bracketing, a lot of mounting of the shells, getting everything actually up there, physically up, so we could start seeing what the structure of the robot was going to look like and the size and everything. Head mounting, working with Khan, and just getting kind of all the artwork and the shells around Khan's mechanism, and then, you know, just getting it dialed in and getting it locked up, getting it in the right spot. So.